this month in the hottest month in Texas history in many of our cities. On July 4th, it was the hottest day in recorded world history. Supposed leaders entrusted by us to do right by us, like Governor Greg Abbott, stripped workers right to a water break away. That is uh, Representative Greg Kassar, Democrat of Texas, relatively new member uh, of the House, who is acknowledging that we are in truly dire times in terms of heat. Big portion of the United States right now experiencing multiple weeks of record breaking heat. People are literally dropping dead from how hot it is. And during all of that, as he points out, Texas decides mandatory water breaks. That's a luxury that I can't afford for you to have. So you get out there and you work some more. And all we've been asking for is for someone in a position of power to act like this is the emergency that it obviously is. And right now, what we have is Kassar. He did a thirst strike uh, going without water, eating or taking a break until nurses required him to stop yesterday. Uh, Washington hit 90 degrees. Um, that's not as high as some other areas in the United States, obviously, but still hot. And uh, throughout the day, as he did whatever he could to draw public attention, the attention of the media to this, he was joined by people like Maxwell Frost, Bernie Sanders, AOC, Ilhan Omar, uh, Dolores Huerta of the United Farm Workers as well. And we want to give you just a little bit of Maxwell Frost, who also represents uh, what is commonly thought of as a red state, talking about this issue. Oftentimes we get labeled, and you do too, as a red state or this and that. But Greg said it, we're not red states, we're under organized states. All right. And we're working to change that every single day. Florida's not a red state, we're a state of millions of working class and the working poor who are fighting and crying out for relief and what we deserve. 100%. And at this point, what they're asking for is to be able to occasionally take a moment to drink water amidst record breaking heat. So they did literally don't die on the job. Jared, what do you make of it? It's modern times of old things. Like the regressive nature of this party is is outrageous. Um, you know, people talk about how we used to not have weekends or child labor laws and things like that, which I I mean, how many people actually don't have weekends off? You know, that's one of those things we have a stand up. Oh, it's the weekend. Tons of people work on weekends. Anyways, yeah. but before those things even came into existence, TGI Friday, because we get Saturday and Sunday off, it wasn't a part of our working experience. Definitely not having a minimum wage, which we're going back towards whittling to nothing as well. Anyway, so this is just another modern version of the same thing. So people are, are concerned about having a water break in a heat wave. It we don't even talk about climate change and the fact that we've got these differing uh, uh, the huge level events that continue to decimate communities. But just general heat, what if it wasn't even an issue? Because when I was a kid and we weren't talking about climate change as much, it was still 9,500 degrees sometimes. So water breaks were still necessary. We still did two days in August for football before the season started and people were still damn near dying as we see every year. So the whole water break thing is just something added on for some reason now because they're trying to I guess collect more money or take make sure these five seconds of drinking some water isn't something that, that these non-humans get. It's gone yeah. from just having any reality behind it, from just unfettered capitalism. Like, oh, if that five minutes is taken, then I lose about two and a half cents to just cruelty. It's you're not worth existence until you die. It's like you're a prisoner. You're gonna be picking away at this sand or this rock. Until it's a pile of sand or until you're a pile of sand. That's the degree of, of, of hatred that people have now for their employees who are doing work for them, which damn near aren't getting paid anywhere near the right amounts. So what's the reason behind this? It's just they talk about these war on Christmases and the war on Christianity and the war on that. How long we until we start acknowledging from all the vast majority of people in this country, the war on workers, on employees, we have the numbers. But as this, there's this hostage effect that we still have. We're like, oh well, the big boss man said I gotta go ahead and die, so I'm gonna go ahead and die. Yeah. When is this gonna change, bro? This is outrageous, and we're just living in it like it's normal. Yeah, I mean, as he says, we need we need to organize, but we should also bear in mind in both of those states, the Republicans are doing everything they can to make it as hard as possible to organize, both on the labor side and on the voting side. Um, and also they're continually co-opted. Working class people who should come together to advance their own economic interests are instead convinced by incredibly well-funded liars in right-wing media, whether on Fox News or the independent right-wing media, 
to instead be more enraged by the fact that a trans person exists on TikTok than about the fact that they might literally die in the heat. Anyway, um, I've also noticed, by the way, particularly during this heat wave, man, haven't the arguments from the right against the concept of climate change become even more pathetic, even more shriveled up than before? Like they used to come out swinging against this. These climate scientists are lying. It's for the money. Now Ben Shapiro's like, put on your AC. That's your argument, you intellectual gladiator. You, by the way, how utterly elitist is that? Just run your just run your AC for six months straight. Yeah, yeah, that's good for you, the millionaire in the studio being paid by billionaires to spread nonsense. Yeah, you could probably run it all day long. For a regular working family, cannot afford to run their AC all day long if they even have AC. Also, yeah, a lot of AC really benefiting the people up on like building a skyscraper or laying road. Like he thinks every job involves talking into a camera. But again, they're the populace, so maybe I shouldn't be so crazy. John, you ever notice more more further west, you go in the city of LA and where people's apartments and residences are, if you're renting or something, there's less likely to have air, central air conditioning within units because they don't I've necessarily that, yeah. have to because it's cooler on the west side because it's closer to the ocean. Um, so this whole thing about, yeah, just turn on your AC, everybody doesn't have AC, even if they have the $2,500 to $3,000 a month to pay for these exorbitant costs of these apartments that still won't have have AC in them, just yeah. saying, and you still have no control to do so. It's not like it's your house. You're like, oh, I just didn't want to install AC because I have all this pile of money that I'm sitting on. I just don't feel like using it. So that whole, like, you know, the excuse to just go with the AC, it just it's a yeah. blanket statement that doesn't really address reality. Yeah, yeah. As Frank Morningtree points out, it's an advancement of his argument to just sell your beachfront property. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm starting to suspect, and I'm not saying it. I'm just starting to suspect. That he's not as smart as we were told he was. Anyway, uh, oh, by the way, uh, just turn on your AC. If we were to, if AOC was to propose some sort of uh, massive public investment to uh, weatherize, insulate, replace the windows, put in heat pumps and all that for houses that don't have it, you, you think he would be a fan of that or you think he'd have a problem with that? Anyway, they're all such goddamn liars.